Right now, I don't care. The World Championship is finished. Green light looks like a reasonable start for Lowe. Cooked it up just like Kevin Hansen. Slot number five straight to the inside. Round the outside, that's Robin Larson. Cross engine in, Tony Drew. Oh, and Jerome Gross engine in knows whose fault he thinks it is. I'm looking at you, Matthias Ekstrom. Not happy. Andreas, great result. You look really pumped and happy with that, but we just saw Johan Christofferson getting quite aggressive with you. What happened? Yeah, it's normal, you know, Rallycross is Rallycross. It's always tough out here and a lot of adrenaline, uh, especially when we enter uh, you guys. So, I mean, uh, that's uh, that's fair. Uh, it's hard out here. It's the last two races of the year. Estering is uh, unique uh, in the way of uh, being our real crazy Rallycross track, especially with that first corner. So. Uh, a lot of stuff happens and, uh, well, first corner is always going to be the first corner and uh, I'm just happy that uh, both the uh, Audi EKS uh, are 1-2 uh, uh, in Q3, so feels very good, I'm happy. Well done, Andreas. Thanks. Ekstrom looked a dead cert to make it two wins in two seasons at Hollius, but Hansen, full of spirit, made his move on the very last corner of the last lap of the day to cross the line first. He went mad, the fans went mental, and the team were a little excited too. However, the celebrations were short-lived. Hansen's move was deemed to be illegal by the stewards, and he was demoted to second place. That last lap, I watched it a hundred times, I think. Uh, it's, it's, it was so amazing, you know, the way that I came out of the Joker, and Matthias was actually quite far ahead, but in my mind, it was never too late. I felt I drove there ultra inside line so there is no space left to, to pass and uh, then uh, had a boom in the door and team uh, had to run up the inside. After the stewards made their decision, Ekstrom decided he wanted the first place trophy for his victory and took the EKS team down the road to Peugeot Hansen to make the handover. A gesture that may have left a mark in the minds of the Hansen team and it could take a while to heal. Everybody allowed to be uh, uh, disappointed that's what sport is all about and in our case I mean if you know that you're the winner I mean sorry then the trophy goes to the winner I wouldn't hand over the first place trophy like that I after that I came to him I went to his team alone in private clothes no cameras on and I said a few words to his team congratulating them to a good performance but with cameras and the way he did it that's not how grown-ups do Reports of drivers fronting up in Park Ferme, the emotions were high. And once the dust had settled, Ekstrom was penalised and demoted to sixth. Who said Swedes were mild mannered? So I was very angry when I got out the car. Uh, you know, got all the adrenaline in your body. I just lost everything that we just worked for. So yeah, I, I did something probably I, I regret. But uh, you know, it's racing, it's sports. Uh, nothing happened. So uh, I still think he he made the worst move. And uh, yeah, that's that's how it can go. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't uh, think it's uh, really necessary to take uh, such action after race. I mean, I've been doing motorsport for many years, and I think you need to learn to when helmet is on and you're on the race, you need to behave accordingly. And uh, in the paddock, I don't see any necessity to do that. Andreas Backrud, you finished equal on points with Timmy Hansen. You, you did everything in your power, I know, this weekend to, to try to get it done. A brilliant start in the semi-final against Nick Klaus, incredible pressure, and, and then I know there was the incident in the final. Uh, you tell us what you want to tell us. I know you must be feeling pretty sour right now. We understand that. I felt I won the battle this weekend with the, having the best reaction by far in the final, uh, having, having everything in my pocket, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I'm not going to comment the rest, but uh, but yeah, it was a strong event. We we played uh, the advantage with the tires after we saw the result of uh, Q1, and uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's how it is. 
Um, what, what about next year? I know you and Liam have been discussing plans for next year already. I know it's a little way ahead to think of it, but like Nick Klass, you know, he, he would love to have been in the mix for the title fight. I know you'll want to take a title in, in your rallycross career. I know how hard you worked to get to the grid this year. Are you going to try and come back? Right now, I don't care. I understand that. World title fighter Solberg and Ekstrom Joker together, but the Joker exits Solberg and Hansen had contact that dropped Solberg into the clutches of his arch rival. He kept Ekstrom behind at the turn one chicane, but the gloves were off and Ekstrom went up the inside at the turn three left-hander. Solberg then proved he could race two and stuck his car back past at the very next turn. But after the belt, the stewards decided the fight was unfair. Ekstrom received a warning, but for Solberg, it was the dreaded black flag and disqualification from Q2. Champ refused to speak to anybody from outside his inner circle. And as dust descended on the paddock, rumors circulated of Solberg pulling out of the event in protest. A new day awaited, but nobody knew if it would include the reigning world champion. Torrential rain overnight and Peter Solberg needed an absolute flyer. Unfortunately, his screen steamed up and he ended up in the wall. Disaster. Uh, Peter, we can see the damage to the car. What happened to your visibility? I can't see, I couldn't see anything. It was uh, demised completely. Uh, and how, after the disqualification in Q2, how does this affect your chances of getting into the semis? Ah, uh, the World Championship, everything is... Finished. The World Championship is finished? Yeah. I feel great. <laughs> no. What can you say? You know, Hansen started it in that heat and then uh, Ekstrom uh, came uh, because I was in two and a half seconds in front of Ekstrom. Then he did passing. I don't think it was bad, you know, it was a good move, you know. I think my move was also very good. I did a really nice overtaking maneuver on him because I were uh, all lined up and uh, once I were inside I just sat there, I did make sure not to push him off and then uh, into the next corner, I mean for sure I understand the emotions are boiling, they were boiling for me for a short moment in a positive way but then in the braking zone uh, a very untypical Petter move because I have never seen him done anything like it. Uh, braking too late, hitting uh, on the bumper got me sideways and in that moment I was not even angry with him because this can happen and that's happened to all of us but then the next move to get uh, him in the door and the next one to land in the guardrail I must say I was just in shock for a short moment yeah, I was sitting in the room and Ekstrom actually said in the meeting that yeah better I couldn't almost feel anything what you touched me in the back but I didn't like your passing well I didn't like your passing either so we were planning to give a warning and then 45, 50 minutes after, they asked me back again and they gave me black flag. The penalty afterwards, I think, is also pretty clear because other drivers have got done similar crimes, got similar penalties. So I think the stewards do a good job. I never got the black flag, my friends. Yeah. So I don't drive. Uh, I drive fair, and that's the main thing, you know. Very unfair. Fighting for a championship the whole year, and uh, this is how they do it, you know. Look at this. Oh yes, Timmer and Tim. Oh come on, lads! Contact on the run back to the paddock. Nothing major. What was going on at the end there? Well, he had a pretty hard uh, dive into turn one when uh, I came out of the Joker. He tried to spin me around. It's unnecessary to do that. Um, so I was a bit like upset about this. So the second time the start guys like before it was Bermanis, now it was Timotianov. So they should pay attention about myself. Interesting, oh, back with the there, isn't there? They're not happy, are they? In uh, turn one and two, and then now the last lap. He's, he's looking eyeballing in the him. mirror, he's yeah. Properly eyeballing him in the mirror. Oh, he's backed him up. So backwards backed him up there, hasn't he? And that is, that's the, yeah, thank you, little nod. So Andreas isn't happy. We need to look at the replays. Not at all happy. He's on the radio. You can see he's got a thumb on the steering wheel, talking on the radio. Look at his mirror still. He's backed him up again. Just see him out of our commentary position. The two cars in front of them have already gone underneath us to return to the paddock and they're only just leaving the track. I don't know, I, I just feel like sometimes, I know Rallycross is Rallycross and it's supposed to be tough, but when you look at the car, you see marks everywhere. You can see it on the left side, you can see it on the right side. Some of us 
they don't know what the price costs on bumpers and fenders and doors and rear bumpers. We try to make it look good uh, for everyone to watch. But yeah, we, we are in the war. Uh, Loyak is a great track, lots of action. But the FIA unfortunately destroyed the track with putting tire barriers in turn two. So when uh, Anton, he, he tried to keep his race line, I tried to keep mine. We hit together and then me putting my front in the tire barriers just off the push from Anton. So it was a big incident and that tire stock is so stupid. I don't know why, what the uh, FIA is thinking about uh, putting the tire stock there. Maybe they want us to, to crash and roll and die. I don't know, uh, but it feels like it. But this was Haken and trying to come around the outside of backward. Yeah. Lucky that he rode the wall, didn't he? But didn't hit <laughs> it too hard. That, that, that was very nice because there's a bit of sand close to the wall and I think it really saved this car. So does Timmer push Haken and White? He maybe oh, yeah. does. I wonder he if the stewards, his way in. Will the stewards get involved in that? I'm not sure. I think it's enough of a racing incident they might not. But there is Timmer's Yarnov. It's Loeb into the final. It's Loeb who goes through into the final. So that must be due to the, the points during qualifying. There's oh, Timmer's really? Yarnov and he looks livid. Timmer's Yarnov looks livid. Oh. So. It's, this is, that's disappointing for yeah, Tim and Kevin. Is. I know you'll be it pleased for really Sebastian. It was really fast all weekend. Uh, th really poor. I thought he might have done it, but there we are. Mm. Tim, they're still cleaning the car off, but he's going to be disappointed about that. But don't touch him! So we're with Tim Timazianov. You're still buckling up ready to race, but you're being told not to race because you've been disqualified. Do you know what for? Yeah, the, they said that in the last corner, double right, I, I touched up Thomas Hecken in the rear and he's going uh, out from the line and I go past him. But I don't touch him because he's, even his rear bumper was clean completely. It was dusty, yes, but uh, we was the same sliding line, but he's really missing the breaking point and go sideways from the corner. That was not my fault. I don't know why they give it to me. The front bumper was broken already in the first lap because it was push pushing by Ericsson uh, uh, on the first and second corner. But Sorry, but I don't know. I, it's not my fault. Even He was not on my bumper totally. I'm sorry, Timo. It doesn't matter. Doran was out really wide, but on the inside, I think, yeah, Tohill and Heikkinen had already lost it. In fact, Doran got back on the track and was collected by them, yeah. bounced off the barriers. And Petter, I mean, he, he couldn't see anything. No. Front end of this car is going to need a good old rebuild. The bonnet is off. I think they'll be hoping to get the bumper off and get inside it just as fast as they can, trying desperately to clean the windows. Petter Solberg has not made it through to the final, so Petter's car wasn't One ready in time. Here. He's got his umbrella up, he was ready to go. He's not happy, I think Petter was hoping for just a little bit longer. He's looking up to the stewards. The stewards are in a glass building just up from where Petter is looking. And Petter really not sure what's going on, but he's not in the car and the car's not there. So there is a time limit for this. He knows there's a time limit for this. Petter Solberg destroying his umbrella as his chances were destroyed of making it through to the final. He's so upset. I've got to be honest, he's got it's two thirds of a six car. or one and a half a dozen. It's a long, oh. but I, of course, Johan wants to go in, but dive in behind your teammate. Or, you know, is Solberg being ignorant to where Christofferson is on the track? Which I think really, I don't think Solberg shut the door on Johan in Belgium. Yes. Like last time it was like this was for me was when Solberg missed the final in Finland and smashed his umbrella up because he was very, very angry. He didn't get what it. Was that 30 14? 2014? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. So, like, my 14 or 15 is a long time ago. Was a puncture, he says. I was no, in front worried. by a whole car. And apologies for the language. Slightly, yeah. Apologies for the language, but bear in mind you are in a world championship car while it's being repaired. Well, I think they've let them have longer than they said they were going to, but either way, Solberg looks really I think he looks quite Anxious. cross and he, he needs to needs to stay calm. Look. Yeah. For the second race in a row, it was Janae's teammate Timmy Hansen making the headlines. Hansen and Solberg locked horns in the race to the first corner. Rainy Snittich was caught up in the crossfire and was left exasperated as the wounded Hanson car blindsided him out of the jump. All three failed to make the final. The dust eventually settled, but emotions were at boiling point. And Timmy let Petter know exactly how he felt. I don't like it's like the old old-fashioned thing with the behavior out on the track. Basically at that point, you know, we're all full of adrenaline and I say it's his fault and he says it's my fault. From his inboard, uh, I was one car length in front when I was braking and turning in. Then he go on the inside, very fast. I think my front wheel is just behind his front wheel. It's quite big contact and 
and I'm in the wall. Um, I think that incident can be taken as a race incident. You know, you can't come past there and then he just crashed into my uh, old side and then he destroyed his wheel. I, I don't feel it was my fault, but okay. But the this, this second one, I think, was the harder, where it's quite a lot separating us and then he comes back into my side. Still have my steering wheel completely straight, not even trying to turn over to the right, and then he hit my back end and I was spinning. They slide wide in the exit of the first corner. I just in more one moment saw the better with passenger doors in front of me. You know, that was the moment when I thought, ah, oh, no, that's end, you know. And then I felt, car is good, I have to continue. I, I pushed hard and just in the second corner I, I saw how the Timmy suspension broke. I'm turning left but the car pulls me to the right so unfortunately Nitis was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Canada race is behind me and uh, I have to look in the future and uh, that's what I'm doing.